Welcome back to the nerdy news you need to know throughout the week on iHeartRadio and podcast services around the world, because my name is Hoodie. And I'm Kevin. And you're officially listening to this Monday winter holiday episode of what, Kev? Crisis. On Infinite Podcast. Ah. And just to let you know, Hoodie, you're going to any drug on 24 days for Percy Jackson. Ooh, you can start on your uh, your own personal advent calendar right now if you wanted to watch <laughs> Percy Jackson. <laughs> a Percy event calendar. See, well, how many chapters are in a Percy Jackson book? If there's 12, then you can read the first book, and then so you get a chapter a day as your advent calendar to watch the show. Yeah, I, I can't remember to tell you the last time I read a book. Here's, here's the thing. So Moore and I went to a new a new thrift store that opened up near us. And I always love going to books uh, book sections just to see what books are there. They always have Harry Potter, but it's always here's one, here's four, here's five, and seven. I'm like, well, I want the other ones. I can't buy all these ones randomly. <laughs> That's not what it was when I was when I was buying um, the Scott Pilgrim books back in the day. It was always I go to I always see the same ones already. I already have that one. Why don't, why don't you get new books in here? <laughs> get here get new week. books. More people <laughs> die so I can get new books in here, please. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> they also had a very festive vest, but uh, a little too tight around the tum-tum, so we couldn't get it. It's okay. Uh, hoodie, right now we are all a little too tight around the tum-tum, so don't feel bad about yeah, it. We, okay. all, we, we all have some decisions to make. Yeah. We're trying to figure out a jingle ball outfit. <laughs> and picks, picks are slim nuns right now. At this point, I'm just going to stop eating. I guess so. Don't do that though. No, eat, make sure you eat healthy amounts. <laughs> the more you know by crisis in an infinite podcast. I mean, one kernel of rice cauliflower a day. That'll be my meal. Just the kernel, not the actual <laughs> cauliflower rice, just the kernel. Yeah. Uh, oh, and Andy Drogo said there are 22 chapters in the first Percy Jackson book. So there's your advent calendar challenge, Andy Drogon, right there. A chapter a day keeps the Percy Jackson away, but in this case, brings them to you. You know, Dag on well, she's gonna open that book on on twenty on twenty two days out and read the whole thing. And read the whole day one day. Limit her to one chapter and one day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but we got a jam packed show for you today. Obviously, we're in a great mood because the holidays happened. We've recovered. We've rested a little bit, and it's kind Come of a it, it's a willy nilly show. You know, we just we got a lot of random news we're piecing together. But we're talking about one big return in the WWE. His name's our truth. We're talking about Invincible episode four, aka the mid-season finale. Already, uh, Kevin has to rant on the MCU rumors that happen all the time on X or Twitter, and we have to talk about the worst games of 2023 so far. Because let's face it, all the games you probably want to get are out by now, except for Avatar. Figuring out what's happening with Avatar still. I actually pick one of those games probably on that list. You it didn't did. pay out well for me. It did not pay out well for you <laughs> at all. But you can see everything we're talking about so much more by going to hot995.com slash crisis crew. Or you could stay up to date on all the nerdy news you need to know on social medias at infinite underscore pods on Instagram. The X going to give it to you. Or Kevin, where can they watch us live? Interact with us. You can go to youtube.com slash infinite underscore pods to watch us on demand on YouTube. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Or you can join us twice a week here on twitch.tv such as underscore pods. Join us live in the chat and have a good old time with your boys. Yes, it's always a good time here. Got an anonymous Drew P, Giles Manks Art, Andy Drogon, and obviously JB Perry in the chat. And we always start the podcast properly with what you doing. We talk about the things we've been doing, lives we've been living, games we've been playing because it is a holiday break. We're going to throw an extra one in here. What have been your Black Friday slash... Cyber Monday hauls, because they're really the same thing nowadays. They're not two separate things anymore. I think Black Friday started two weeks ago. It did. It did. We'll, oh, we'll talk about that when we get to me. Don't worry. But Kevin, since it is Monday, you get to go first, good sir. As far as Black Friday hauls, um, I didn't actually get anything, honestly. I didn't really want anything. Um, <laughs> we were boring, got pots and pans. Okay. I mean, that's what we did, and then we put some money down on our crews. That, that's what, it was like, we looked around, and it was like, don't really need anything. <laughs> well, no, well, nothing at Black Friday sale. Like, you know, we can't, you know, uh, re- retile a roof through a Black Friday sale. That doesn't exist. I mean, sometimes it could. If you buy off the, all the roof tiles off of Amazon. <laughs> then they, they, they should be, but there's, there's never any sales on Black Friday at the grocery store. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, if it, was, it was like Black Friday prices on like, on like chicken and beef and frozen fries. Could you imagine? <laughs> that'd be, yeah, that'd be, be stocked up for life, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, as far as what I've been watching, I found this really, really interesting documentary series on uh, Netflix called How To. Okay. There, I think there was a, I think there were three or four um, 
version of it. So the first one I watched was How to Be a Mob Boss. Ooh. And it was like Chronicles Mob Bosses <laughs> throughout the history of time. Second one was How to Be, How to be a Tyrant. It talks about like, you know, dictators, Stalin, Hitler, all those people. Mm-hmm. Then the third one is How to Be a Cult Leader. I haven't watched that one yet. But I'm definitely getting like my... my um. My um, Education. my dad documentary series <laughs> yeah. right now. And I go, this is very interesting. Hmm, hmm this is good. <laughs> I actually learned a few things I didn't know about about a couple of uh, tyrannical leaders. That I thought I knew. Oh, I didn't know that that person was that bad. I knew he was bad. I didn't know he was that bad. <laughs> and then also um, caught up on um, Invincible. Really good. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about that. Really, mm-hmm. really good. And going back to God of War still, and I'm still having a great time with it. But then I'm I'm, re- I'm realizing that like some of the fights I remember fighting. I must have been higher level when I fought them the first time. I'm getting wrecked. So oh, so you're doing like a new game plus mode, or what are you doing? I just started, I just did a new save and oh, okay. over again. So like I'm getting wrecked bad. Like <laughs> I'm like, man, I don't remember this fight being that hard to the point where I'm like, no, I'm going back to the main story. Just I ain't doing any exploring. This is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got to do anything else this weekend. I didn't do anything else really cool this weekend. I went to Festival of the Trees uh, yesterday. Uh, that's the thing they do here in Baltimore. It's like um, these people put together like these, these these custom trees. Like you can get a Barbie tree, a Beetlejuice tree, a Pokemon tree, and then people um, um, bid on them like an auction, and then the money goes back to um, special needs school. Okay, so it's really cool. Did that? I saw a Pokemon tree that was amazing. And did you buy it? No, it was already bought. No, okay. all the trees are already already bought. <laughs> um, but I did do the thing that I, I failed to do with my daughter when she was born. I'm gonna do it with my next daughter though. I daughter. Her... Yeah, I said a daughter. Da- well, I didn't know. We, did we reveal in genders here? Yes, that was the whole thing. We talked about it like. Uh, no, we, you said we didn't know what the gender was of the kid. No, we did a gender reveal member on, on my Instagram. I put it on my. Oh, Instagram. we did. That's right. That's right. The zoo. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. You're right. COVID brain. We're gonna say that. I didn't know COVID, COVID was forever ago. <laughs> um, but yeah. So I'm doing it for my next one. I didn't do it for this one. I did it right here. So on that tree, there was a Squirtle, a Charmander, and a Bulbasaur. So I told, Hey, Leah, without thinking. If you had to choose one of these Pokemon to be your first Pokemon, which one would it, would it be? And she chose Charmander. That's okay choice. It's an okay choice. I was surprised because we, us, us Pokemon vets know that if you choose Charmander, it's a little rough in the middle of the game because mm-hmm. you got to fight them flower bosses. Not the fire, but the, yeah, the water Rock people. and the water people <laughs> immediately. It, it, it was a little rough. <laughs> so I was surprised she chose Charmander. So I, I definitely will, once my daughter, next daughter starts crawling, I'll, I'll do the whole, like, you know, the Dalai Lama thing, but like, Put them, get three plushies, and be like, follow mm-hmm. the one you want. Hopefully she does Bulbasaur, because that's, that's what I did. Nah, Squirtle, <laughs> homie. Squirtle all the way. Blastoise. He's got cannons in his in his back. <laughs> I can shoot Solar Beam with Venusaur. Nah, you gotta wait till you get Solar Beam at, like, level 40, though. Question me. I know what the levels are for the moves. I know for the first ones. <laughs> but also, then after I saw that tree, I, I, I began singing very loudly, um, um, Gotta Catch Them All, Pokemon. Very um, festive, you know. <laughs> very, like to the point, my wife said, "You're, you're, you're, like, you're a little loud." I'm like, "Oh, I'm sorry. I just love this song." <laughs> so it's very, very loud. <laughs> but that was my weekend. What about you, buddy? Uh, yeah. So for me, Black Friday, Cyber Monday hauls pretty much um, got a deal on a present for someone in my family. Not going to say what it is, but I saved a hundred dollars on the thing, which was really cool. Because once again, we say this every year. Make sure you follow at Wario64 and get his notifications because that's what happened. I woke up at 6 o'clock and it was a lightning deal and it worked out. So he'll be happy. They will be happy for Christmas. I like my, my nephew that my nephew that doesn't have a PS5 yet. He was like, I'm going to buy a PS5. I'm like, top what you're doing. Go to Twitter, buy Wario64. He'll show you the best deal and then you buy that. Yes. And for some instances, this very mileage may vary. You could have gotten a PS5 for $350, a normal yeah, PS5. I- Granted, that was you got the code in Target Circle, then went to the Target the day of it came out, but that was a whole thing. Um, but then for me personally, did get uh, God of War 2018. So we bought that. It was on sale this week for fourteen dollars digitally. I think you can still buy it in stores retail for nine bucks if you want the disc. But I figured just get it digitally, which is dope. So I'll start that probably winter holidays most likely. And um, on top of that, this is a pro tip if you are planning a wedding soon or currently planning a wedding, anything like that. Look for things, small things you can buy on Black Friday that will save you money ahead of time. Because we bought um, some lights for our tables and we bought, um, we're trying to do um, pretty much the big marquee letters for our for the hoods uh, when we get married. So it'll be like T H E H O D 
S, obviously. So we bought them. They were on sale, too. Uh, we bought a couple just to see if they're what we want or not before <laughs> investing in the rest of them. Question. And I'm just curious. You, 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 she's probably already struck this down. Um, when you guys are formally announced mm-hmm. at the reception and you come down whatever kind of aisle or whatever that is, are you going to play I'm So Hood? Here's the thing. So I've tested this out. This is my personal anthem, I'm So Hood by DJ Khaled. Tested it out at one of the comedy shows for Intern John. It's good, but it's a deep cut more than I realized because everyone's like, oh, I know all I do is win and like the other songs, but I'm So Hood is more of a more of a deep cut of you were, you know, sixth, seventh grade listening to that on one of six and oh, park, okay. you know, more than anything. God, I think that... It, 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 it'll do, if, it, if nobody else knew what it was, I'd be like, yeah, of me. Oh like, oh. Like, I get it. Yeah, literally the radio people will get it. But they're like, what? Yeah, exactly. The radio this. people will get it. Uh, <laughs> as of right now, we're thinking this is an insider for you, the hashtag crisis crew, a.k.a. The people. Uh, is We're thinking we're going to come into um, the, um, damn it, what is it? Uh, the ABBA song. Um, Dancing Queen. No, gimme, gimme, gimme a man after midnight. Nah. That oh, song. Okay. I forgot what I forgot what the title is. That's a room. That's a potential, which should be cool. Um, but those are Black Friday halls. Uh, Aaron Giles, think about Cop and Breath of the Wild. That's a good soul sucker game. So make sure you get through Spider Man Two before <laughs> investing cool. in that one. Andy <laughs> Jogon got Mortal Kombat, Hogwarts Legacy for PlayStation from Target. Then she got Stardew Valley, Unpacking, and Shrey on Steam. Great, you're set for the next like six months there. So Even check Steam sales. Shoot, I didn't even think about that. There's a thing, Kevin. <laughs> it's everywhere. Everywhere you go, there's a sale. Um, but those are my sale halls, which is fun. Uh, let's see, anyone else? Uh, JB Perry got his Christmas shopping done. He might try to get Hogwarts Legacy. I think that's what's going to be the sleeper hit is that everyone who waited, because we were all figuring out do we even play that game? Do we like that game? Um, what do we do? <laughs> now it's on sale probably like for 30 bucks or less. Now's the time to get it. That's everyone likes Harry Potter. That's what it is. No, I was um, thinking about the same thing about Gotham Knights because mm-hmm. that was like ten dollars. No, well, no. no, not even ten dollars. No, it ain't good. <laughs> um, but on top of that, a uh, thing I watched: Squid Game: The Challenge, which is the reality version of Squid Games. It's actually pretty good. If you are like me, and I've said this on the show multiple times, a challenge fan, you know the MTV World Rules, Real World. It's pretty much that. And little did I realize there are a lot of other reality show people on this show. I thought they were just average Joes, but pretty much everyone on that show has made a TikTok now, uh, which is why it's taking over your For You page, which makes sense because if 450 people (laughs) say they're on the the show on TikTok, it'd flood your For You page. Um, A lot of them are in actual other reality shows, and um, I think I've gotten through the first five episodes. It's good. It's definitely, you can tell Netflix is like, hey, we want you to be a villain. We want you to be like a hero of the show or whatever. Um, so it's, it's trashy TV for you to watch. So watch it if you like that type of stuff. If not, you're not missing anything. Yeah, I was seeing a lot of people react to it on um, Twitter over the weekends. So I was wondering, like, is it is it reality for reality's sake or is it actual like reality? Because there was one thing, and I, I haven't watched Squid Games, but it was like, Two characters are like best friends going into this like this next game where you like know that this is the game where like your friend dies and, mm-hmm. and shows something like that. So like I don't want to. Are they are they like really pushing this to be reality or is it actually reality? Well, so the cool thing is this is a mild spoiler. They kind of go through the beats of the act the normal show on Netflix, but then I think it's the third challenge that's supposed to be tug of war. Um, it actually ends up being battleship. So they kind of switch things around and then it's like oh, what are we doing here? Um, but there definitely are like characters you really want to win, and character one character you really want to see lose, and you'll know who he is immediately off the first episode. <laughs> you stuck my battleship, yeah. I, I, I might, I might give this a speed watch where I just. Oh, wait, it's only up. it's only six episodes in an hour yeah. each, so it's a pretty quick watch. They're all out now, um, but like I said, it's reality for reality's sake. It's not realistic at all, and the other side of it is apparently the shooting schedule and conditions were very bad so we'll find out what happens with this show and if netflix does it ever again <laughs> and they do the thing with with, with, with the hide and seek lady like um the big old oh the red light shoot. red light green light yeah. yeah so every character uh or every character every contestant has a um a paint bag or whatever that would shoot as to simulate them dying um other thing is 
if you've seen the Mr. B Squid games, it's the same thing. So I don't, take that as you will. Mr. B Squid games is thirty minutes. So I don't know. Mr. Beast. We can do a whole episode on Mr. Beast. We could. So many questions about that guy. I don't know if he's good or bad. <laughs> I really don't know. And then my last thing before we get into the actual news, and that's what we said, it's a willy-nilly show with barely any news, is I have taught the ways and trained a Padawan in the ways of Settlers of Catan. <gasps> Who is the new uh, victim, I should say? I Brother John is the oh, new wow. victim. As much as he's tried to avoid and hide whenever I bring Catan home for the holidays, little did it take was his fiance seeing a deal for it for 20 bucks at Target that I got a FaceTime call and taught them how to play the game for an hour straight. <laughs> that I was on a FaceTime call telling them how to play Catan. <laughs> That is that is great. And that is all put together. Brotherly love of hey, just get, make me the fifth player in this at this point. Couples night. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so can't wait to whoop his ass come Christmas Day with Katan because he thought I taught him all the secrets. No, I did not. I know. I'm prepping. <laughs> I taught you everything that you know, not everything that I know. Not everything that I know. <laughs> uh, so that's what I've been doing. Let us know what you've been doing in the comments, twitch.tv slash infinite underscore pods or at infinite underscore pods. But let's get on into it, Kevin, because we got some fun because it's time for the news. It's time for the news. And first things first. First things first, I'm the realist. WrestleMania 40 is about to be litty, y'all. That's what I'm saying. Woo woo! <laughs> it's gonna be a fun time in the Brazilian brotherly love. Hell yeah! Woo-hoo. Because Kevin, as the wrestling expert on the show, what happened last night as of this podcast recording? Well, we did have the uh, men's uh, war games match. It's a pretty good match, mm-hmm. but at the end of the show, we all thought it was over, and they even showed the whole you know uh, copyright thing at the bottom right corner of the screen. That old familiar record scratch hit, and CM Punk returned. <laughs> Look in my eyes. What do you see? Which is official CM Punk back in WWE literally two months after he was in AEW and left, you know? so He was asked to leave. <laughs> yes. J.B. Perry in the chat said it best. Hell froze over, and it did. Yes. It's been... Nine years, practically 10 years since we last saw CM Punk in the WWE. This is the wrestling segment of the podcast, so skip maybe five minutes if you don't want to hear about wrestling stuff. No, you will stay But we it. are excited because it is the journey of this podcast that just started today or yesterday until April 7th through 8th of where we're going to finish this journey. <laughs> it is. Um, so they say Royal Rumble kind of starts at all, but it really was Survivor Series to kind of start getting to see Hints. Pieces put mm. in place, mm-hmm. so to speak, for what you're going to see. Mm. Very exciting. Very exciting stuff. <laughs> yes. Uh, so what this means, CM Punk being officially back in the WWE, is we assume he will be headlining WrestleMania one of the nights against the current WWE heavyweight champion, Seth Rollins. <laughs> yes. So if you, again, if you're into this wrestling life, uh, first of all, you know, thank you for joining us. But also, <laughs> um, when he came out, um, of course, there's cell phone cameras everywhere now, especially in the front row of wrestling, mm-hmm. wrestling things. Everybody records everything. Nobody's in the moment. Everybody's just with their phone. Like, oh, you, all right. So this is Kevin's <laughs> referencing the TikTok of wrestling was cool back in the 90s when everyone had flash photography. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, when he came out and he's like just went to the crowd in front of the aisle before he walked, to, he didn't walk down the aisle at all. He didn't go to the ring. Seth Rollins started hurling mm-hmm. obscenities at him. Mm-hmm. F you, F you, you piece of s, like a lot of things. To the point where uh, Corey, what's his name? Graves. Uh, Corey Graves and Michael Michael Cole were kind of holding him back. Mm-hmm. Now, here's where I question whether this is real or not. If Seth Rollins wanted to go down there and start a fight with CM Punk, Michael Cole is not going to hold him back. <laughs> and Graves this is for you is non-wrestling people. Michael Cole is an announcer. He's been an announcer in the WWE for probably 30 years at this point almost. Years yeah, old, roughly. Yeah. <laughs> And Corey Graves, he has a weird neck injury. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't get any fisticuffs with anybody. Um, there's no way in the world that it, if it was real, if it was really something going on, 
I, I believe in my heart of hearts, uh, Cody would have did something because he's right there. Mm -hmm. Sami Zayn would have did something because he's right there as well. And if you look in the background of that, Jey Uso and Randy Orton are in the ring having the time of their life. A returning Randy Orton, too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, another thing, Randy Orton came back last night, too, and that was great, also. Because Randy Orton is the size of Brock Lesnar now. I don't know what he did, I don't know what he took. And he's still he, wearing <laughs> them tidies. He's, he's like, I still wear it in the trunks, and that's it. <laughs> But like we said, hoodie. So I just said, um, the kind of time we piece up and put be put, put in place. It looks like we're we're on a crash course to Seth Rollins versus CM Punk, either at Royal Rumble or hopefully WrestleMania. And I'm, mm. I hope to God at WrestleMania because that place is going to go crazy. And then obviously we have two nights at WrestleMania. We assume Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes is still the other contender now. Maybe The Rock. Who knows? Um, but either way, still dope. This is really like, hey, now's the time to get back into wrestling, y'all. You know, and it's always usually around, like Kev said, Survivor Series, where you're like, oh, some interesting stuff actually happened, and then it pays off. December usually nothing really happens. Then it's January, February, March, April, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. WrestleMania. We also have, uh, we probably have two. Um, shoot, I don't remember, I forget his name. The uh, YouTube guy now that's U.S. champion. Uh, Logan Paul, yes. Probably Logan Paul versus LA Knight WrestleMania as well. I'm down for it. Gives LA Knight a title. That's, that's the only one for LA. LA Knight, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was a great night um, of wrestling. Like I said, Randy Orton came back. He looks jacked. Um, oh, the other thing, too, that happened last night was that supposedly, again, supposedly, Drew McIntyre stormed out of the building. He was upset that mm -hmm. CM Punk came back. But then if you if you look again, at again, everybody has a phone. Everybody's watching every everybody in that front row. The cameraman supposedly signaled to Drew McIntyre, and then that's when he went crazy. Yeah. So it's it's so, interesting, and that's the cool thing of like <laughs> wrestling in 2023. Anything that looks like, quote-unquote, a work or is actually happening, most of the time isn't as much as we thought it was anymore. <laughs> I always say the people that watch wrestling as a sport, and they want to see their guys as champions, they want to see their guys win. Like, no, you're watching the show wrong. It's a show. Yeah. Watch it like you watch Invincible. Watch mm -hmm. it like you watch Gen V, The Boys. It's a TV show. It's not sport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, exciting times. And if you know your partner obsessed over TikTok, it has. I think him coming back. The video has over probably throughout all social media, probably two hundred million views uh, with every social media platform together. Let's see where YouTube is. Like I had it up right now, actually. Before Twitter we was at. 30 million about an hour ago views of just that one video tweet. YouTube, the two-minute video was at 2.7 million. Yeah, so probably maybe 100 million, closer to that, whatever. But yeah. still, cool time to be a wrestling fan. If anything, say what you will about CM Punk. It's a fun time to watch. It's fun to watch. It's hell in the back, but, you know, it's fun to watch on TV. That's, that depends what if you care about it or not. Yeah, and Triple H had a really cool thing actually during a press conference. By the way, I never watched press conferences. I watched. I watched this one. it. I watched all the clips. Yep. <laughs> he said that um, people aren't the same people they were ten years ago. Which is and true. I, I kind of agree with that. And if you read again, just getting to my our wrestling fanboy this, if you read what went down at AEW, it was not all CM Punk's fault. It was two sides of that street, but mm -hmm. he gets to blame for some reason. Um, I, I feel like my Nicholas Cage impression. <laughs> That's funny. Um. I think that at the end of the day, AEW is a place where, quote unquote, the inmates are running the asylum. Mm -hmm. Tony Khan doesn't really have firm control, whereas WWE, which is more as an established company in general, you know who's in charge. So you're not gonna you're not gonna press the envelope because you know what's gonna happen. Yeah. We don't need you. Get out. Exactly. <laughs> That's the end of that. Uh, <laughs> but that is a little wrestling, little talk, or a little wrestling side table chat. But we're here for what you are here for. It's to talk about Invincible's mid-season finale, a.k.a. episode four. We really got to get an Invincible thing ready, so when we say that, we just cut to that for like two seconds. I think, you know, maybe back. when it comes back, we'll have it ready, you know? <laughs> that would be so cool, though. Exactly. Uh, but episode four, we found out, uh, you were rudely reminded that we only are getting four episodes now. We're getting the back half, the back four, sometime in early 2024. Say what you will, it kind of makes sense because with the holidays, let's face it, most people kind of tune out of watching their shows because you usually get like a winter finale and then they're gone. We're used to it with The Flash and all that stuff. So it makes sense. Why be the show barely anyone's talking about during the holidays when it can be a show everyone's talking about in February instead? Makes a lot of sense. I didn't know that. That was news to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't face it. Oh, no, really? Um, but yeah, makes sense. So like you said, everybody's watching... Lifetime or Hallmark horrible Christmas movies right now, mm -hmm. or I, last week we watched um, I can't remember what it was called, but, but the Little Rel and Ludacris Christmas movie on Disney mm -hmm. Plus. Mm -hmm. It was terrible, but I enjoyed it. 
It's Christmas. They're, 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 that's what you're about to be watching for the next four weeks. Yeah. I'm watching the Santa Claus's <laughs> show. Is it good? No, but it's Santa Claus, so I got to watch it, you know? I watched the Santa Claus again, actually, the first one recently. And I'm just watching it like, these are some irresponsible parents. You're not letting your kid believe in Santa Claus? What the heck is wrong okay, with you? I thought we were going somewhere else with that, but Kevin was like, I hate Santa. Okay, all right. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. The, the, again, it's kind of like watching Mrs. Doubtfire again. It's, the parents are terrible in that movie. Well, Tim Robin Williams is Robin Williams is in Mrs. Doubtfire is the dad. That's the nanny. So it's okay, though, Kevin, for Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> she was mean to... She wanted to, He wanted to have a birthday party. She said no. His, oh, she, why? Why can't he have a birthday party? Because his grades are bad? Shut up. Nobody cares about grades. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But if you're a child listening to this podcast, care about your grades. Try to get that A. A minus. That's still an A in my book. A's on the paper still. Shoot for a B because in life it can fail upward. It doesn't matter. Yeah, well, doesn't set matter. the expectations low is another thing too. Okay, cool. <laughs> but Kevin, what did you think about uh, – we'll go full non-spoilers here. Uh, or full spoilers, sorry. Uh, for Invincible Episode 4, what did you think about it? I thought it was cool. Um uh, I didn't watch the one before this one, so I watched I watched back to back, and watching back to back was very rewarding. Um, because at the end of episode what, three, when he realized he's going to see his his dad at, at, on a different planet, I was like, whoa! I didn't have to wait a week to see what happened. I'm like, I can dive right into it. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing his dad kind of become a new man, so to speak, was really really cool. And then ha- watching him having to deal basically deal with his crap because he. he if you watch the show so far, him and his mom are going through some tough times mm-hmm. emotionally and mentally right now. Um, and seeing him have to deal with it face to face like that was amazing. So I, I really enjoyed it. Um, my only real critique about this series, this season, is that there are way too many storylines to follow. I yeah. feel like. So, um, and there. Yeah, keep going, keep going. I was going to say, because I was going to name them out. There's a, a, her mom, his mom dealing with her, with her mental health issues with. Her, her, basically, her husband had lied to her for however long they were together. Twenty years, then, yeah. Then there is the multiversal travel guy um, that's upset with Invisible, blowing up one of his machines. Then there's also even the twins, who's a real clone, who's not the real. The clone, Maulers. That. It's all that's always padded story. Like, hey, just yeah. put a Mauler thing in there, you know? Yeah. And then there's his dad stuff right now, and then there's still stuff with, with the Guardians going on. So mm. there's a lot of things going on, and it's just kind of like, okay, wait a minute. That's what you want me to focus on. Yeah. They're all they're all good. Mm-hmm. That's what, what, what you want me to focus on. And, and the cool thing is this is what I've learned about uh because I, I asked for a couple volumes of the comic for Christmas for the holidays. Cause I'm like so entranced in it. I really think getting immersed in it like a Harry Potter with the source material is really dope. Um, but is one, that's how the comics are, where it's only really one she or one page will be you're on Mark's story, and then the next page is oh here's Adam Eve, but we're cutting oh, back cool. to Eve thing. Other cool thing um, is because you watched the episodes back to back. We had the week in between episode three and four. Damn you, Peter Cullen, <laughs> Optimus Prime, Erdy now in the Alien. Um, but apparently in the comics, it was almost a year in between Mark coming to his dad saying, "Hey, Mark," and then. A year before in the comics before it actually you got to see them reunite, which is is wild. Just to see, compare yeah, I found both. Year between issues, basically. Mm-hmm. Is what mm-hmm. Wow, that's crazy. That's a, that's end game stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoyed it too. I really enjoyed like this episode had a lot of like, comic homages, which um, really was like Omni Man like floating through space, and it literally was like I feel like that's I'll find out in the comic like. You see it, flip it, he's just in a different planet, flip it, he's in a different pa- planet. And I feel like that's going to be a good lo-fi background thing you'll see of just like, oh, Invincible music oh, yeah. play, and he's just flying off in the side. Quick question, though, too. Was one of those, uh, uh, what was it called, Vitramites? Vitramites? Mm-hmm. Was one of those modeled after Steve Harvey? I feel like that one guy was modeled after Steve uh, Harvey. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Buff Steve Harvey, maybe. Because <laughs> like, well, it's Reginald Bell Johnson... High school where Reginald Johnson is the principal. I'm like, these guys love their entertainers in this feels like. Uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, but I really love that we had that, and then really like the human parallel of Debbie, Mark's mom, doing the same thing, but in like in Earth terms, where he's flying through planets and she's just walking through streets. But it was like the same thing, which is really cool. Yeah, and then talk, talk more about her story too. Her going to that that group therapy class, and um. Telling that one guy that yeah, my husband's the reason why your wife is gone. Mm-hmm. But that was that was rough. That was really rough. I can't imagine going through that. Like, and then I didn't really like his re- response, but at the same time, I can understand it. Yeah, because I mean, grief, grief, grief is a mother, man. I'll tell you what, it can do a lot of things um, to make you very cold. 
<laughs> but then we cut, and, you know, we're in episode four, too. We find out, I love the Invincible cut is, like, uh, it, Mark finds out Omni-Man hooked up with a Thraxen named Andressa, uh, the actress who plays her is from Better Call Saul, which is dope. And then Omni-Man has another son. We don't know the kid's name yet. Uh, but this is where Mark says, you gotta be invincible and then he says effing kidding me which was funny as hell <laughs> that was that was great they've, they've had a lot of fun with that, that invincible title card this year mm-hmm. uh, it's all been pretty good um but then we find out also the maulers the, the running joke last season was that they didn't know who was the clone who wasn't we find out the aftermath of the first episode that there's a mauler who's disfigured he clones himself and he's like well we know which one's the clone that was at the beginning of the episode at the very end we find out the clone kills the original because it completes the cycle, whatever. It's it's what it is, but it's funny. I really think that's just like a running joke Robert Kirkman yeah. had. And he's like, yeah, just have these two guys. They're always here. They never die. They never get defeated. They're never in jail too long. They never win. They're just there. Kind of like the Master and Apprentice. That's mm-hmm. why you only keep one, because eventually he's going to kill you. <laughs> Take his spot. <laughs> um, but then we also, this is kind of leading to Kevin saying a lot of storylines. Donald's figuring out if he's a clone or not. Uh, that one too, yeah. Yeah, which I was like, I'd like to learn more about that, but we only got click glimpses of it, which is okay. Um, then we have Eve's storyline where she meets with William and Amber. Uh, they find out it's been a week since Mark left. They're supposed to get brunch. Um, Eve tries to save the day. She feels faces kill cannon again. But turns out she just doesn't have enough drive, enough whatever to save the day, save two people. They die. Eventually, her storyline this episode, she ends up going back home. And it's interesting of just like seeing a superhero trying to save the day, but failing at every time. I think that's what we're kind of going for with that. Her dad's a piece of work, too, piece, man. Oh, my gosh. A, a dick, if we would like to say in a polite <laughs> term. <laughs> if my daughter could turn things to gold, I'd be like, hey, I need some more gold. We don't do things that way. <laughs> Shut up and go cash it in. I don't know where you cash in a, a gold apple at, but oh, pawn go cash shop. It in. Pawn shop, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bored pawn shop. Like, yeah, I'm gonna need to go. I want to go to Detroit thing. Pond just to meet the, that family. <laughs> just be like, no, it's supposed to be worth a million dollars. The place is still open too, actually. It, it, might, is. Might, might be a it is. I've seen it on you TikTok. You should vacation. You should honeymoon in Detroit so you can mm, go to Hardcore. Nothing Park. better. Nothing better, Kevin. <laughs> uh, but we cut back to uh, we find an Omni Man with Andres's wife, their unnamed son still. Thraxen's only last one human year. And it's interesting because it's been six months, so we'll find out how long Mark's brother actually lives. Uh, but we do find out Omni Man, you know does have passion he's trying to figure out why do i have these emotions that's what happens yeah. when you're human baby that's what happens you know the, the, the scene where he comes out and they're all dead and like why do i feel that, that, that shoot, why do actors always escape my name i escape my head what, what's the guy's name that does his voice again uh kill cannon or omni man omni man jk simmons JK Simmons. he is and we don't deserve him because he's so good in so many different things, whether he's live action or or voice acting. Or a video game. <laughs> or a video game. Like, he, he is too, we don't deserve J.K. Simmons. We don't. He is amazing in that scene. Uh, <laughs> but while that's going on, we find out Lucan, who, voiced by Phil Lamar, uh, but looks like Steve Harvey, according to Kevin, he arrives with all the other Viltramites to uh, attack it because Omni-Man's on there. Omni-Man slices his guts, we find out later. Didn't fully kill him all the way. Probably should have, but okay, whatever. Uh, but then we get this dope ass fight. Um, pretty much, we find out Omni Man having to tell Mark, aka Invincible, you know, fight like you're not on Earth because they will kill you. So you have to kill them or they will kill you. And we get dope ass fight. Obviously, Mark doesn't, still can't do it all the way. And in doing so, he, he's fighting off. I think it's her name was Thula, one of the other Viltramites. Stabs him. He's okay. He survives the episode. But we find out. Omni Man, um, uh, he he smushes a guy's head named Vidor like this, like a meat pulverizer, and it's really dope because in this case, when we in season one, when he's smushing heads, you're like, wait, no, and in this one, like, yeah, smush that head. We need some head smushing. A little more, a little, a little more. more. <laughs> uh, he then also uh, pretty much elbows Thula's face in with just his elbow, which is dope too. Yeah, that, that was really cool. Um, that whole fight scene was cool. But it it just goes to show, though, um, for me, the people that say Omni Man's strong on Superman, he's not. I don't know, Kevin. <laughs> just one elbow. It just depends. Get the the right elbow in, you know. I mean, I, just, 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 just he looked like he was expending effort. Superman never looked like he's expending effort unless he's fighting Zod. Uh, that's true too. Not 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 regular Kryptonian Zod. 
You know what I mean? Yes. And <laughs> and just when it looks like everything's wrapping up nicely, Luca not dead. He fully like back collapses Omni Man, so he like folds him like an accordion the other way. The wrong way. The wrong way. <laughs> he dies. It looks like Omni Man's about to die, but unfortunately, it looks like the Viltrumites have come in by General Krieg, who's voiced by one. Clancy Brown, Mr. Krabs, you know, our favorite principal from Gen V who died in the first episode. <laughs> yeah, and now he's in charge again. Clancy Brown is in charge a lot. What was it? Was it was he on Arrow? He was. He no, was no. a flash. A flash. He was flash and he was on um Punisher. He was he was a bad guy at Punisher too. First season of Punisher. Nobody watch it. Yes. Don't worry about yeah, it. it's okay. Uh, <laughs> he's always a military guy. Uh but we find out uh that the Viltrumites are taking Omni Man to be executed, that they tell Mark, you're the new warden of Earth. Kill 10 people to get them in line, or we'll kill 10 million, which is kind of like, okay, well, what's Mark going to do? We find out that as Omni-Man's leaving, he tells Mark, look for my books, look at my books. But while this is going on, Debbie throws out Omni-Man's books because he's trying to move on. <laughs> oh, I guess, I'm guessing, like, I haven't read the comics. Maybe, maybe I should go buy some, because you're going to get some, I should get some too. Actually. It looks like it'd be a good read. I finish one, There's give it to you. You finish that one, give it to someone. You know, it's a whole chain. But I guess there's some coded message on how to be Viltrumites probably in those books. Maybe. Or some secret scan your face and then, oh, look, everything opens up, you know? <laughs> like, and I would say as Megalomaniac uh, as Omni-Man was in the first season, I feel like Earth ruling Earth wasn't good enough. He wanted to rule all Viltrumites. So he's probably mm. looking for a way to take, take down the ruling yeah. class anyway. I have a feeling he's not going to die either because J.K. Simmons is printing money just by being Omni-Man. So. J.K. Simmons is amazing. I wish J.K. Simmons was like the voice of my Alexa. I remember when they the, every celebrity was doing that for like Garmin yeah. for the GPS? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I remember we had we had a he had a display at Best Buy like um, we had Mr. T turn left fool like you know. and then you're like it was fun for like two seconds and then you're, all right I'm tired of it turn it off switch it back <laughs> yeah that's good that's kind of like how Waze can you, t- you set ways to sing in directions mm-hmm. it's, it's it's cool for like two seconds it's like you know what this is good. this is too much <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's invincible obviously we have to wait till early 2024 for the back half. Interestingly enough, Robert Kirkman did say episode four and episode eight are his favorite episodes this season because they will leave you mind blown. And episode four did do that. So we'll find out what happens in episode eight, the season finale, you know? Also amazing too that the other the other story we forgot about is it, like basically Mark obeying just obeying the guy's orders to go to go there. Mm-hmm. Cecil. So that's gonna be mm-hmm. Cecil, yeah. So that's gonna be another thing to, to, to Cecil has a lot of things going on he doesn't even know he doesn't even know about. It's a, good time. it's a good time. I definitely think if you've been sleeping on Invincible, now's the time to catch up. You got season one, the Adam Eve sort of special than this before the back half of season two comes out because I think it's well worth it. And I'm assuming this will come out before Boys season four comes out. And then I'll probably do an opposite yeah. of this will end and then the Boys will be premiered the same week kind of how this was on Gen V. I'm kind of hoping too that for like another season two of the Adam Eve spinoff. Yeah, it'll be interesting because like – this show, she's kind of been separate, but we're still seeing that storyline of her character. So you're right. It's like, well, we keep going that. I know there is sort of a, a game. It's more of a dating RPG with her, too. Um, really? Huh? And then also the other rumor is we're supposed to get an Invincible movie. I don't know if we need the movie right now because we got the show still going on, but okay. I, I, I think Seth Rogen is still like, on the track Attached, it too. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that, that's really cool. Seth Rogen, I, I'm starting to like him more as a writer than an actor. Teenage Honestly. Mutant Ninja Turtles, we got this, uh, boys, the boys as well. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, Future Man. I still think Future Man is a great show. Uh, it's it. okay. It's okay. We got the pickle <laughs> movie that was on HBO Max for a hot second. <laughs> I wanted to watch. It. I never watched it before. I took it off. It was okay. It was. It was. It was a good laugh. That was it. Uh, but Kevin, we have to talk about and stop the laughter because Kevin has a rant that's been building for the past four days. Kevin, what's going on with you and the MCU? <laughs> so. And granted, this rant was fresh in my head on Friday. <laughs> um, wrestling yesterday kind of, kind of cooled it off. But still, I am really, really, really tired of people taking non-verified sources as gold mm-hmm. and running with them and basing their opinions on an entire franchise over some no-name Twitter or no-name um, you know, ver- um, entertainment sor- news source. So on Friday, it was trending that... Was it Friday or Thursday? I think it was Friday I texted you, right? Uh, Wednesday, I think you texted me Wednesday. about it. Yeah. Well, well, okay. So it was trending that... Um, uh, shoot, what's her name? I want to forget her name. Anya Taylor-Joy. Anya Taylor-Joy. I was going to say Mania for some reason. 
Anya Taylor-Joy uh, was being looked at for a villainous role in Silver Surfer. And then right below that, it said it was going to be, I mean, villainous role in Fantastic Four. Right below that, it said she's going to be Silver Surfer. And in no Variety article, no Entertain, no USA Today article, no, I don't know, New York Deadline. Times article. Deadline, yeah, yeah. Is that mentioned anywhere? Anywhere. Now, two weeks, a week ago when... It was rumored that Pedro Pascal, Pedro Pascal may play Mr. Fantastic. That was in Variety. That mm-hmm. was in Deadline. That was in all those new, those entertainment news trades. You could trust those. This was some no name um, account on Twitter, and people were going crazy on Twitter. And I don't understand why something that's not even verified making people go crazy. And then now today, it looks like uh, Cillian Murphy is supposed to be the, the leading ca- candidate to play Doctor Doom. Which again. I'm not mad about it on that one. Not yeah, it. It's really cool, but it's not verified by yeah. anybody. And people are going crazy again. And it goes into a, and then whenever somebody gender bends a character, you always get, get, get the people. Um, now, ironically, I'm in the basement when I say this. You get the people that live in their mom's basement. And technically, <laughs> like, this is your parents' basement that you own now, but okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, like, <laughs> you get these, these basement dwellers who say, this is the reason why the MCU is failing. This is why I don't get no money. The MCU don't need your money. They don't want your money. They don't mm. want one guy to pay thirteen fifty to go see the movie. They want me to pay thirteen fifty times four is what? I don't know. $45 to take the entire family to see the movie. That's why they do these things. It just makes me so upset that people use this to 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 villain, to say this franchise is dead. Like, no, it's not dead. You know why it's not dead? They did twenty five before this that are amazing. <laughs> now, now, Kevin, who was Cillian Murphy supposed to play? Doctor Doom. Doom. <laughs> I forgot to do it. Uh, but yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I, I think that's your full rant on things currently. Yeah, full okay. Because anyone uh, talks stuttering and get really upset and get sweaty. You're fine. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah, you're right. I'm just saying, crew listener, if it ain't honestly, if it ain't us. If we don't talk about it, it's probably not. We true. like to be your source for news because yes, we found it, then we retweeted it. Um, we see a lot of things that we don't talk about. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it is true. We are. In, I mean, that's just the world we're in. We're right now until it's confirmed. We just Google things and think things are going to happen. Really, we're in the the height again of fantastic forecasting. We know. I mean, according to Variety and Deadline, Pedro Pascal is Mister Fantastic, but until Kevin Feige says it, it's technically not confirmed. But hey. That's just people trying to be people, trying to get them scoops, and we're just trying to be here and entertain you. Give the news you need to know. Um, and it, Anya Taylor Joy, I still think is my front running to play Gwen Stacy for the Spider Man's whatever future trilogy is. If that happens, how that involves Sony, who knows? Um, Cillian Murphy, I think is dope. It would make more sense to match him age wise now with Pedro Pascal because I think they're around the same age ish or somewhere yeah. in there. Um, if they happen, they happen. But I do think we are in like a world of Twitter. And I think it's not the For You. It is it is the For You page on Twitter now of just, well, you liked all these casting news of Mr. Fantastic. Here's all the rumors. Whereas yeah. it used to be your following page was you follow Variety. So you're getting the news source from Variety. And like, I, I, I literally just saw a rumor about what um, Echo could be about. Um, and if it's true, we're probably not going to like it. But I haven't watched it yet, so I'm not going to go crazy about it. Yeah. Until <laughs> Variety or Deadline, IGN, or us tell you, you're good. We put us in the same lines as those other three. And we get we because I mean, and it, this, this goes again for me for me working at a a news outlet. Be accurate. Don't be first. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Don't spell Lex Luthor without the O, because that's will get you in trouble. Looking at you, uh, people who reported on Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor. By the way, you're right, Hoodie. Um, Pedro Pascal was born in 75. Celine Murphy, 76. So they were literally Pretty one spot year on age-wise. If they want to do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, but now we've talked about sort of Kevin's rant on the MCU. Uh, ooh, Aaron Giles uh, says, I have to admit the fan art of Emma Myers and Millie Al- Alcock as Gwen isn't too shabby as well. Who is Emma Myers? It was Millie Alcock. Alcock. <laughs> it was Millie Alcock. <laughs> uh, oh, Emma Myers is in Wednesday. That's that's right. I remember. And then uh, do, 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 uh, Millie Alcock, I think, is. Oh, she was. Um, she's young. She, she's a young version of House of the Dragon. Oh, yes. What's her name? Oh, what's her name? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Rainier, Rainier. Rainier. Yes, Rainier. I think that'd be Rainier. dope. That's, but we'll find out. You know, we'll find out when we get there. Yeah, you know? we'll find out when we get there. Like you know, I'm not, I'm not upset about Blue Marvel. I'm sad. 
One day, Kevin. About it. One day, you know. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Miss Marvel season two, whenever that happens. But speaking of season twos on Disney Plus, well, it's technically isn't a season two, but it's more of a spin-off of WandaVision. We got our first real glimpse at the Agatha Harkness show, which tentatively still right now is called Agatha Dark Hole Diaries. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, it didn't look that bad. And honestly, I must talk just the title alone. I think drop the Harkness. Ain't nobody know Harkness. They just remember Agatha all along from WandaVision anyway. <laughs> it's called Ag- Ag- Agatha colon all along. Agatha Christie? Is that what the, maybe that's what they're trying to go for? Maybe confuse people. Is it an Agatha Christie book? <laughs> She's the vampire leader, right? She's the lady that did the murder mysteries with Hercule Poirot. Okay, I'm thinking of somebody else. Then. I'm thinking about somebody that did the vampire movies. Yes, you are. You're thinking of Stephanie Myers. No, who did who did who did interview with the vampire? Interview with the vampire? I don't know. Book. I don't know. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Anne Rice. Yeah, I think of Anne Rice. Are oh, you referencing Anne Rice? 1976. That book came out on this show. I don't know. I don't know. But the movie came out in the 90s. Okay. Anyway, back to Agatha Dark. And it was a really Diaries. good show on HBO Max by the two. Actually, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> Dark Old Diaries. It's supposed to be what was supposed to be Agatha Cover of Chaos. All the other stuff is supposed to be. Looks dope. Pretty much how we're getting a glimpse at this. It was sort of like a teaser reel, which you would see maybe at a Comic Con or you know this holiday season. Get a first look at Agatha Dark Old Diaries in the AMC Movie Minute with Maria Menounos. Uh, you know, it's called movie or groovy or something now. When do they film those? I always wonder. Like, did, are they are, like constantly working on those? Oh yeah, yeah. and just like, hey, we got this behind the scenes on a movie no one cares about. Put it in it. The, the, yeah, the exactly. movie minute. It's okay. Um, but the cool thing is, in it, we pretty much get a glimpse. It's really, I think it's like thirty seconds mostly of just pretty much finding out. One, the show is going to be based still again on the Darkhold, which is interesting. Um, that the show will have pretty much pl- completely female led, which is really dope. Female director, female writer, dope as hell. Um, we get a glimpse at Aubrey Plaza. We get a glimpse at uh, Patty Lapone. Really dope. We don't know what they're doing, but it is cool. Set dressing vibes. We are still going for the WandaVision vibes, but put a little witchiness on it. It looks like too is it's gonna be kind of be like a step through time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That makes sense. Like her in I guess I don't know the 1600s, her in the 1800s, her in the early 1900s. So I'm, I'm kind of cool of, of, of watching like maybe Agatha just rem- like here Agatha, Agatha Agatha Harkness. This is your life type of type of show. If it's that, I think I'll be all, all, all on board for that because maybe through that they can kind of build the, the the early world of Marvel. Like maybe get glimpses of Shield back in the day, glimpses of some. Marvel heroes that we know now that were around like Marvel 1600s. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that can be a whole thing. It's kind of exciting. I think the cool thing is they have the potential, you know, that we we now have the plot line of Young Avengers actually going somewhere. Maybe Wanda's kids pop up. I know they don't exist in MCU proper right now with 616 adjacent, if that's what we're calling it. Um, it changes every time, every movie and show we watch. That's okay. Um, but if the kids are involved, I think that's dope just to keep them top of mind that, Hey, those are probably also your contenders for young Avengers as well. Other theory plot line that hangs over the show. Will Wanda be involved at all? Whether it is, you know, after multiverse of madness, after Wanda vision or before that, I think it'd be pretty cool to just get Elizabeth Olsen in for a day shoot. And just say this was right after Multiverse of Madness, or right before Multiverse of Madness. So it's still like, it can, it can kind of connect the dots for us when you finish WandaVision, and Wanda is something completely different than she ends up being in Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. There's also precedent, too. Um, uh, again, because we, we get, we're in a fantastic forecasting season. Um, uh, Reed and Sue have a kid named, uh, not Nathan, Nathan, I can't remember his kid's name. Nathaniel Reed Richards, right? I think Nathaniel was was his dad or something like that, but I can't remember the name of the kid. Franklin the Richards. Kids are, Franklin Richards, yes. Um, very powerful mutant, and whenever they go off on adventures as Fantastic Four, they actually left them with a baby with, with, with him with a babysitter. Babysitter was Agatha Harkness. So there's something there too. I mean, maybe, maybe that's how Agatha stops being, you know, Agatha. She actually cares for this kid. I don't know. <laughs> I think the other thing is too cool is um, if you played Midnight Suns, Agatha Harkness is involved in that game. Uh, there's the caretaker and there's Agatha Harkness. That's the whole thing. I'm assuming we're gonna get 
into that on this show. Um, but that's a game to pick up this holiday season. Get some Marvel storylines and see if they pop up in the MCU, which is really cool. Yeah, that, that would be funny if Kevin Feige sitting in his office somewhere. Oh, are they going to do that? Hey, we should do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kevin, this is a breaking, uh, not a crisis, but a breaking deal. Uh, for you right now, if you're listening live, that's the beauty of listening at twitch.tv slash infinite underscore pods. Uh, the Marvel Legends Captain Carter Shield is $50 right now on Amazon uh, instead of its Ooh. normal $100. So if you want to get a little Britain Shield on action going on, it's got the What If logoing on it. It's 50 bucks. so enjoy that. For, for the Brit in your life. For the Can Brit be- in your life or the Captain Carter stand in your life as well. It's already 50% claim, so maybe get on it right now, though. Uh, she was chopped in half. That was sad. It was sad. And also, it's it's $150 normally, so that's $100 off there. So go get it. That's a deal for you. Um, but yeah, either way, excited. Hoping that comes out next year. That's all. I just wanted to come out next year. And it'd be fun just really to get through all the shows the MCU has to get through, then have Deadpool 3 we know expected, and then let's go in sort of fresh back into the things. Not Andy Drogon, but some <laughs> cool shit. <laughs> why, why, why? Wow, they really made her shield half off. I mean, hey, it's perfect time to get it now, and then what if comes out in a month? So <laughs> enjoy it as you will. Uh. Andy, Andy, I, you know I love dark humor. That, that's that, great. That's some dark humor. That's some dark hold humor. You dark know what I'm saying? There you go. <laughs> uh, but, Kevin, now we've talked about that. Let's talk about one last thing. It's the worst video games of 2023 so far. We teased at the beginning. We live in an era where, yes, there were a ton of great games, and Kevin still has a chance at maybe coming back a little bit in our Fantasy Gaming League. He has Avatar on his list. We'll see if that game even comes out this year still. But we're talking about the games that were so bad, they're very notorious. We're looking at, you know, the Lord of the Rings game, maybe a King Kong game. Kevin, let's go through these games that you think are the worst of 2023 so far, with one month to go, pretty much. (laughs) Yeah, the, the first one is, 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 of course, like you said, that Gollum game was terrible. Yes, Lord of the Rings Gollum was bad. I think a game came out in May, and do you remember playing it? No, but don't get it this year for the holidays, which is why we're doing it now while you're shopping for games. So, you know, don't get these games. <laughs> I watched a few TikToks on this game, and just the amount of people said, oh, my gosh, this is terrible. <laughs> like. I'm like, what, why don't you spend money to buy this game to make a make a TikTok? About it? <laughs> it, looked, it looked unplayable mm-hmm, to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, right now, it has a thirty. We'll go lowest one, thirty four on Metacritic, uh, and it's pretty much on every console except the Switch. Yeah, don't get that game. It's okay. Don't, don't get, get that game. Don't, don't, do it. It. don't do it. Other one we got for uh, worst games of 2023 so far. Crime Boss Rock Hay City, and you're like, what the hell is this game? It's the one. That has pretty much every 80s star, including Chuck Norris, Danny Glover, Danny Trejo, a bunch of other actors as well in it. That looks like it's, hey, kind of parody and ripping off Saints Row and Grand Theft Auto, maybe a little more action movie. Nah, glitches galore can't compensate for having uh, B tier actors, I guess, as of right now. So, yeah, this one, um, I don't know who thought this was gonna be a good idea. From, I, from the trailer, I was like, oh. Safe Road just came out, and that didn't work. You know, I did the same thing. <laughs> uh, as of right now, it's still only released on PC. It's sitting at a 52, so better than Gollum. But we're getting there. And then, Kevin, let's let's skip the one that's next on the list, because Last of Us Part 1, the PC version, that's the PC version. That's what you get for getting a yeah. PC, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Greg Miller told you, gaming on PC is stupid. Get a yeah. console. Yes. Uh, but the <laughs> next one, Kevin, kind of makes sense, because it came... And kind of went. And what was that one? Uh, Atomic Heart. I yes. remember this one. Uh, I was actually... This is one of those games where like I, I knew about. I was like, let me pay attention to this one. I mean, maybe someone want to play in this soon. Mm. Play soon. But then I saw it. Like, oh, no. This is not for me. And this is a game that is very... It's set in Russia. Sort of Soviet Union Russia. Fut- ultra-futuristic. Where it's kind of like Wolfenstein a little bit. Um, but it's also like Bioshock. And that game kind of kind came and went because no one played it. It's sitting at a 70 on Metacritic right now. Came out in February. But if you're thinking games of 2023, you're probably not thinking of Atomic Heart, unfortunately. And yeah, that game kind of reminded me of, like, remember we were really excited about how cool the Water 18, 1886 looked mm-hmm. on PS4? 
Then it was like, oh, it's just a game. <laughs> <laughs> then you got some of these quick hits that even we didn't play. Blood Bowl 3, which is out exclusively on every console, came out in February, sitting out of 51 in its lowest Metacritic store, mainly because of its microtransactions, which, whew, man, remember yeah. microtransactions was the buzzword of gaming, and now it's just life service. <laughs> now it's just life, yeah. yeah. Like, they, they, just, they just rebranded. That's what they did. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> they just rebranded the name. Uh, <laughs> then you have uh, Disney Speedstorm, which is their Mario Kart game, which looks great. Mind you, it's guarded by microtransactions a lot. It's on every console now. It was in sort of early access. Now it's, you can fully play it. It's free. Uh, but sitting at a 69 as his lowest Metacritic score, kind of looks more like it's capitalizing on Disney. But hey, you got to pay for Disney. But that's the Disney experience, you know? Yeah, I think this should have been better as a mobile game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this mobile game, is, and that way the, the microtransactions don't feel as bad because you're playing a mobile game. Exactly. You know, you know what it's about. <laughs> uh, then you got a game called Dookie Dash, uh, which is from the com- parent company behind the Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs. They made a game. And uh, came out on PC so bad. Came out in January. No Metacritic score as of now. Uh, that <laughs> no one said we're not. We're not playing it. We don't mm-hmm. want. No, we should. We should contact them and request a review copy. Nah, I'm okay. I don't want to be involved anywhere with Board Ape because we don't have that field with their NFTs. But then, Kevin, yeah. we had to talk about a game that you know very dear to your heart because you drafted it in your list as a mistake. <laughs> this game looked cool to me. I thought it was gonna be about an Earthbender. I'm like, sweet, Earth bending the game. This is totally going to be great. And it wasn't. It's Forspoken. No, nobody liked it. Not everybody really played it. It's sitting at a 63 right now on uh, Metacritic, 64 on PS5. Um, it looked cool. Like It looked like a really cool game. But I guess it, uh, uh, was it test footage for a console should never be a game. Yeah, probably. that's true. That's probably a good <laughs> idea. But hey, you know, that's a game... If it's fifteen bucks for Black Friday. Pick it up. Why not? You can get something out should of I, it, probably. Should I buy for Spoken or should I buy Gotham Knights? <laughs> Neither, and buy a Fortnite skin is what I'll tell you instead. <laughs> hey, no love. You'll get more no more more use out of the Fortnite skin than those other two games. <laughs> 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 then we got uh, sort of this list we've been going through: God of Rock, which sounds cool. Sounds like it's a Guitar Hero game. No, it's a Guitar Hero meets Street Fighter game where instead of, you know, (laughs) hitting the buttons to match them and or using the A and all the combinations to play the fighting game, you have to do both (laughs) to win the game. Screw that. (laughs) It came out in April. uh, Is out on every console. uh, Has a 62 as its lowest score, which it's a game that seems great, but then when it's executed, doesn't look as great. I still I say it all the time I I missed when the days of when the rhythm music genre dominated gaming. That was a fun time too. <laughs> it was a good time. It's coming back. We all know it's coming back. Xbox owns Activision now. DJ Hero, bring it back. <laughs> bring it back. Uh, but Kevin, what we got as these last two on this list, and we'll add two new ones to the list. I got Minecraft Legends again. I'm not really too familiar about. My daughter is is a is a um, emerging Minecraft player. Mm-hmm. What is different about this one than it is with regular Minecraft? This is essentially to try to make a Minecraft spin-off game where it is a strategy game. And ah. this, I'm talking about, we all know this. They make a game that looks great in the trailer, but then it's really, you have three characters that are playing three other characters in an arena, which we all hate and is a mobile game cash cow, but they put this on consoles. Yeah, I, I, I care how that sucks. <laughs> bad, 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 bad. Bad. Bad Minecraft. I'm doing S- that again. Sitting at a 67 as his lowest score. And the last one, or there's two more on this list, uh, Redfall, which we all know dear oh. to our hearts earlier this year, which was we all thought, hey, it's Bethesda. It's the game coming. Technically not Bethesda, whatever you want to say. It's, you know, Bethesda software, whatever you want to say. The game that's, you know, bringing Starfield later out this year. Starfield's its own thing. That's not the worst game, but, you know, it's not what we wanted. Redfall even worse why because there was nothing there when it came out there's still some stuff there but it's just not what we wanted and it was boring and was very derivative of other games which is why it's out of 56 on metacritic redfall is xbox's first spoken there you go <laughs> you're, you're spot on you know they both had a, a very big loss this year which was those Again, two games we saw this trailer in, in in their game showcase however that long that was oh, it looks vampires okay that's cool and then it came out. I was like, "Oh, 
this this sucks. <laughs> this uh, and all. then just to your defense on the Gotham Knights thing, Anonymous Drew P. Gotham Knights has a good story, but awful gameplay. So frustrating. Andy Drogon, not gonna lie, loved Arkham Knights, but that's just because it gave me a lot of fanfic in spell. So I can take that as you will, I guess. Well, Andy, Andy, do you write fanfic? Please send me some. I'm curious. Maybe write. No, I don't know. You write one about us if you want to, as Batman and Robin. Ooh, I like that. Yes, cool do one. that. Andy Drogon. That's your homework. That's your homework by the end of the year. <laughs> you will get you for Percy Jackson if you do that. Uh, and then the last one on this list is Wanted Dead, which I never heard about. Came out in February. Um, apparently, the AI in the game just all over the place, which is why it's sitting at a 57 as its lowest Metacritic score. AI can kill a, even, the, even the greatest game, uh, game um, idea. If, if mm. the AI doesn't work, exactly. it makes the game untenable. Uh, but, Kevin... We're not done. We have to add two new ones on this. You know one if you're a big fan of this big gorilla uh, who takes on Godzilla often. Kevin, what was the game that everyone notoriously hated on? Because instead of having actual graphics for the game, it just showed you a still image of what was supposed to go there. King Kong. Yes. Skull Island Rise of Kong, to be more specific. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, in hindsight, it's like, how can you ruin a King Kong game? Just make Rampage like back in the day. But they figured it out. They, they did it. <laughs> they really figured it out and did it. <laughs> and, like, the weird thing is, like, this game, this is the one where you see it's just a gorilla, like, staring deadpan off into the corner. That was that game. And just like, what the hell is going on? Obviously, bad games have a place in our hearts. And you see it on Twitch or YouTube to see how bad they are. But this literally had a level where you were facing a raptor. And one scene, the raptor's animated. The next scene is just a picture of raptor go here. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> raptor go here. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> so, so that's a bad game, obviously. Let me see what it's at right now on Metacritic. I didn't see. Let's see. Right Alternatively, now. I do hear that that Godzilla show on Amazon, on um, on the Apple TV is monster. Actually, the MonsterVerse right? show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm hearing actually it's pretty good. I, I may have to. There might, there might be a, be a Christmas uh, vacation movie. <laughs> Yes, I think so. Once once the episodes are all out, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rise of Kong just on PC came out last month in October, uh, twenty three on Metacritic. So that's our lowest. Yeah, that's our lowest one so far. But not to be outdone, we have to talk about. Came out. I think as this podcast recording, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, let me get it. Pull it up right here. It is do 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 the Walking Dead. Destinies, which doesn't have a rating <laughs> on Metacritic as of right now, but this is the game. If you've seen it on TikTok or social media, is it looks like The Walking Dead, but it's not. It's not how you thought The Walking Dead was supposed to look like in video game form, because it's supposed to be have the option of oh, it's kind of a choose your own adventure. What happened? The big premise is. Instead of Shane dying in season two, you kill Rick instead, and Shane's the leader. What happens instead? Who lives? Who dies? Thing is, facial expressions are whack. A lot of the scenes, or what we kind of critique some shows for, is it just a still image with audio going on, looking at you, Young Justice, a lot of oh the time, gosh. Young Justice. Um, and it's it's weird. It's wild. You can see it on social media. Also tied right now for another game. So pretty much... We're due for one in December, and the only game I know so far coming out in December, Kevin, is Avatar. So just get ready. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, when you mentioned this game, I thought you were talking about the game that we played at E3 in 2018. Oh, and I forgot, and you reminded me. It's what's again called? <laughs> uh, it was it was Walking Dead. I can't remember the name of the studio. Um, I, I got right Overkill. Here. Overkill. Overkill, yeah. That was a first-person shooter. Um, they've kind of along the lines of, 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 of Days Gone on PS, PS4. Mm-hmm. But no, this is another terrible Walking Dead game. <laughs> that one wasn't that good either. <laughs> and here's the thing. There's really only one good Walking Dead game, and that's the Telltale one. Yep. Maybe the first that's two, it. then the back ones are kind of all over the place. But after that, not really any other good ones. First two can legit make you cry, right? Yes, I could cry. You, for sure, would definitely cry if you played. Maybe that's a street. Maybe that's a Kevin stream we do in the near future. <laughs> nah, I don't need. I don't need that. Nope. No, no, no. Anxiety's high enough. Just saying. Uh, but those are the games you need to avoid for the holidays. So if someone says, I don't know, get me a game for my PS5 or Xbox or st- PC, whatever. Um, don't get those games. Get something else instead. 
out of those games, get Gotham Knights instead. Let's bring it full circle, you know? <laughs> or if you really, really don't like somebody and they, they don't know that you don't like them, give them one of these games. And then, then they'll know. That is true. If you want to say, F you, I really hate you. <laughs> hey, you have an Xbox? Here's the Gotham game. Enjoy. <laughs> What was that other game called? The, the Rock K City game? Uh, uh, crime called? City, Rock K, Rock K City, yeah. Crime Bot, whatever, something like that. Yeah. Give me, give me a copy of that. Like this is for you. I thought about. I saw this. I thought about Chuck you, Norris. Yeah, Danny Trejo. <laughs> Happy holidays. Enjoy yours. <laughs> Play this game. <laughs> uh, but that does it for us on this episode. We will be back on Thursday talking about. I don't know. We'll find out. Countdown to Percy Jackson. Hopefully something happens. We didn't get a Star Wars trailer like I thought we were going to get this weekend, unfortunately. You know, you know what we could do on our next episode, Hoodie? Um, Andy Drogon had a, had a great suggestion that we should take. Um, I don't know where the test is. I'm sure it exists somewhere. Oh, okay. We could take the test to see how, who would our um, godparents actually be. Ooh, who are uh, my up. Percy Jackson godparents? I don't actually have real godparents. I'll say that to you right now. I have... Three, but I only talked to one now. Why do you have three? <laughs> Was one a backup for the other two? <laughs> Basically. Basically. Yeah. In case these two die, well, I got another one still. They didn't die. They just kind of just fell off in life. In no, okay. I'm that smart, <laughs> I guess, then. Uh, but we'll be doing that on Thursday's episode. Will it last an hour? No, but we will see what happens with it. That's for sure. <laughs> Maybe we'll do, we'll do one in the beginning, one in the end. And then Andy Drogon, as soon as that fanfic is done, that will be read on this podcast, though you best believe. <laughs> If I have the time, I would totally produce that auditorially for a podcast. Oh, oh, oh. I have sound effects. I'll do voices. I'll do everything. Mm, yes. Uh, <laughs> but you can see everything we talked about so much more. Hot995.com slash Crisis Crew. Stay up to date on our social medias at infinite underscore pods. It's a great time to be a nerd. Literally, trailers coming out the wazoo. We had Thanksgiving as a break. So next week, we'll probably be ta- stacked with a ton of news, most likely. Um, but keep it locked there. You can also watch us twitch.tv or youtube.com slash infinite underscore pods. It's a great time. The chat is always wild. And literally, we love that you guys literally talk to each other on there <laughs> and have conversations without us. And then we have to catch up because we want to be in the know. <laughs> It's kind of funny. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. I'm scrolling here. I'm probably listening to Hoodie. What are you talking about? Wait a minute. What is, what is Aaron talking about? Oh, okay. And they're like, no, Kevin, pay attention. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, squirrel. Squirrel. Uh, but until next time, my name is Hoodie. And I'm Kevin. And Aaron Giles said if we do the fanfic, we'll leave it up to a vote. You have officially <laughs> listened to this pre-fanfic episode of what, Kev? Crisis. On Infinite Podcast. In the words of another podcast, let's get weird. Ooh.